So let's have a look at the output data in a bit of detail. As we've looked at for previous examples, ethanol is a nice molecule to choose because it's got a couple of different things happening along it. You can see that there is an intact molecule with uh, two carbons, six hydrogens, and also one oxygen. So this is going to give us a peak around 46. Now, we would go a lot more specific if we were to go through our calculations. Um, but in actual fact, what we find is that it's just as easy to um, round these off to give you, uh, to help you just to identify where some of these fragments might be. So the whole molecule would have a mass of 46. And you can see that the highest peak there is actually a peak of 46. Now, you can, interestingly enough, see a peak at 45. Now 45 has only lost uh, a mass of one, and a mass of one is a hydrogen. So you can see the first of the little molecules that we have on the side here is a molecule that is basically ethanol without that hydrogen attached to the oxygen. So that one less, 46 minus one is 45. So that means it must have lost uh, hydrogen. There must be a, have been a hydrogen that fragmented off it. So the next big peak we see is this peak at 31. So let's take our molecule and subtract 31. And what we get is 15. Now you might remember from the previous slide, 15 is what we get from a methyl group, a CH3 group. So that indicates that somewhere along this fragment, we've had a CH3 group break off it. Now, it could be at either or both ends. It's not telling us how many there are at this point in time. It's just telling us that, that when this particular molecule fragments, one of the fragments that can be uh, ripped off it is a CH3 group. Now, that leaves us with our 31. So we can also look at what is the nature of the 31. And again, because we know we're looking at ethanol, we know that what's happened is that the rest of that molecule, so a C H2OH uh, remains after fragmentation. So you can see we've got 12 for the carbon, 16 for the oxygen and three hydrogens. And this is what's going to give us our uh, mass of 31. So this is the value of mass spectroscopy data. Usually what it'll give us is um, first and foremost is we'll be looking for the molar mass. So the high value will be the molar mass of the compound. And that's obviously very important data for us. We know that there's a number of things that, that exist as uh, isomers of different types of compounds. And so even if we can identify exactly the carbons, the oxygens and the hydrogens, for example, that are present, we may not necessarily know exactly where they are. But then this idea of fragmentation does allow us to um, look for where the molecule may have been broken, where fragments may um, originate from. And so you can see that there are some values that are present on this output and some values that are not. And specifically for those larger peaks, they are giving us a really good indication of, the, um, of where those fragments are uh, coming from. And therefore, they can help us to, like a jigsaw puzzle, put the molecule back together stick all these fragments back together and recreate that uh, original molecule. And that's what's fun about mass spectroscopy data. So again, you want to have a little bit of a look at a few examples, look at the outputs and see if you can at least start to identify some of those interesting little fragments that uh, have broken off the molecule. Have fun and thanks for watching.